Well, this is the Algag's Whippet Fish. And this is one heck of a striped bass bite. I'm going to show you how to use this lure, how to use it for trolling for striped bass, as well as for pitching for striped bass. Let's get this guy back and do a little bit more. But a great chance for us to get a workout on these lures and learn how to use them. So right now, I'm using the Whippet Fish. I'm using a pretty heavy head. I got the three ounce head on because I'm trolling. I'm only about 12 feet of water. I'm going three miles an hour. This is a little guy, but there's a lot bigger fish here. We're gonna try and get some right now. My machines are showing that I'm going over a pile of fish. And I'm just gonna get them set up, get my speed just about right, a little bit under three miles an hour. And let's see how long this is gonna take. I could also work these rods in the holder here and pop them a little bit. Give them a little, the lure a little more life, but a lot of times this thing will just work just as well as a dead stick. Pop this back here and see if we get something interested in it. Basically, I'm just working it along. And one of the heads actually has a skirt on it. I'll show you that in a little bit. There we go. Uh, just like that, I'm going to put it back in the holder, the fish hit it. Let's get this boat out of gear. And if nothing is going to demonstrate this lure better than that. A little conventional reel here, the level wind. And the whole idea here is that I'm working this lure, I'm trying to work it through the fish, I'm only about 12 feet of water, got about 110, 130 feet of line out. So you can get down a little bit. It's a pretty decent fish right here. Here in a moment. Come on, fish. Uh, That's a decent one. It's a beautiful looking striped bass right there. Get a little color to them. Al Gags, Whippet Fish, another one. Again, we can set this back, like I said, maybe 100, 130 feet. Watch my machine, see if I'm working under these on a new fish, but I can see birds up in front of me, and that is my next destination. Now, that didn't take a very long to get one on this side. Got into the fish, and we are hooked up again. fish right here. It's going to be a little tricky here because my line got two lines out. I'm working. The boat's slipping into the breeze, so my line's going to be on the bottom in about one second. I'm not going to worry about it because it's muddy bottom and this lure is not going to hang up. And I'm fishing some 30 pound braid on Go. Another nice striper on Al Kex with fish. Back he goes. So this is very much in real time. The boat going in the right direction. Get this set back out. Pitched it out to the side a little bit because the way I was turning, and I don't want to make I want to make sure it doesn't end up in the other line. Get this set up. Okay. And because I dragged the bottom a moment ago, I'm just gonna check to make sure they're still clean. A nice fish breaking out to my right. I'm gonna get the boat over on in just a second.
So because I'm really trolling with these whippet fish, one of the things I want to do is I'm picking a lure weight that's nice and heavy because I want to get it down where the fish are. And so this is actually the three ounce head. Sometimes I'm fishing with a four. I probably never go lighter than the two. And I'll tell you what, I have got my hands full here. So now I have two fish on. Uh, this is a big fish. The middle rod's going off. I'm just gonna let that fish sit out there while I work this one. I'm gonna get a little bit of slide from the wind. But like I was saying, the beauty of this rig is that you don't have to do very much. You basically just put it in the holder, run over the fish, it's gonna catch. And like I said, I'm using the heavier heads because I'm trolling. And this is another decent fish. In a moment, I'm gonna get this one in nice and quick. I'm gonna turn around and grab that one on the middle rod and bring him in. So he's up here. Yeah, I gotta like this. This is very easy fishing. I'm using the pearl color. Um, there's lots of different colors. Pick one that you like. Pretty much using the pearl color because I've been really trying to figure out the right weights and speeds and I want everything else to be equal. And I'm gonna get this guy back and let's get this one in the middle rod. Oh yeah, he's got some size as well. And this rod, 30 pound braid, I can put a bunch of pressure on this fish. And get him up in here, I've got a little four foot floral leader, 50 pound on the end of this, a snap, a swivel up above it. Sometimes I connect the floral to the main line with the swivel. I do that because in case this thing gets tangled and other lure wants to spin, I don't want to get a lot of spin in my braided line. Strike, flip this guy in. Oh, not too shabby. Gotta like it. Now normally, I'd just be flipping these fish at both sides with a fish flipper and not touching them, but I'm gonna show you that this is working amazingly well. Now I'm gonna turn around and get back on these fish again. one. So this one's got a little bit of a skirt on it. I like the skirt. It gives it a little more body. And what I found is a lot of times the big fish also love the skirt. But there are times where this unskirted fish is better. I think it has to do with the water resistance or the look the fish are going for. This might ride a little higher up in the water. Uh, but this is one of those things where you as the angler, you got to figure out what, what works by you. So now I'm just going to demonstrate setting the three rods and the drop back process. Usually I want to put my middle rod out first. And the reason why is because it's going to be a lot easier to swing the other rods out to the side so these rods aren't going to foul each other. So I'm just dropping this back and adjust the speed just for a second. Okay, this is still going out. I want to try and get this back about 110 feet. That's one. My rig wheel's real straight here. And the nice thing is my middle rod's set, so I can pitch that out. I don't have to worry about fouling anything here. And you notice I've got these little brackets that get my make my boat a little wider. It's really cool. There's lots of different brands of these. It makes my footprint through the water so I'm trolling really, really big. every time I run over the body of fish. And it's another respectable fish. Now I notice right now my skirted one is not fishing quite as well. I'm not going to give up on it though. Because I'm pretty 
pretty good chance that that's going to catch a really big fish in here. Everything I'm catching is pretty much, well, this is like a small one. Small one right here. It's about as small as they've been. Let's see if I can somehow get all three rods out without managing to get bit before I get the third one out. A lot of fish here over a pretty broad area. I see a bunch of boats that have basically stopped and they're pitching to ours. It's fun. It's a good way to fish. It's not going to get you the most fish. It may not get you the biggest fish. So this same lure you see me using right here, I actually use really effectively throwing in marlin and tuna in the Galapagos. The thing I like about it compared to other shad rigs is the whipping fish has a very wide down, heavy hook. And it's perfect for big strike bass. They got a big mouth. There's no way this hook's going to bend. It gives you a lot of room between the hook point and the shad body. Probably my favorite feature of it. That's not to mention the head. It's just beautifully designed and more tracks. Middle rod, there it goes. Making a bit of a turn, mark some fish, hooked up. Nice thing about the direction I'm trolling in right now is that wind's behind me. I'm gonna keep my lures moving along. All I have to do is take the boat out of gear right now. The lures are gonna keep moving. They're not gonna lay too much on the bottom. Work this fish in nice and quick. We'll get, a, we'll get a release and we will try and get this middle rod back again. The middle rod's a little longer than the other rods and seems to be fishing a bit better. Let's get this guy in here. Let's get twirl around here. There he goes. Come on, fish. Not the biggest, probably the smallest fish of the day so far, but just to show you. This is a pretty big head. This is a pretty small fish. They got no problem attacking these things. So, back in gear again. But I'm gonna, I've slipped down into about 10 feet of water. I'm gonna push out a little bit deeper based on my track. Have a little bit of bird life inside of me, but I really think the better fish are gonna be outside here. So if you're setting the middle rod back while you've got your other two rods out, it's really important to the boat's going in a straight line. You do not want to hang these lures up on each other with braided line. Because when you bring them in, I guarantee you it's going to be a mess. That's the problem with trolling with braided line. And I like the braided line because there's no stretch and low, very little water resistance because of low diameter. But you cannot tangle these. So like any fishery, one of the things we want to watch for is what's happening around us. Like, I've got birds that are coming up and going down. I don't necessarily want to race all over the place. Like, some more birds came up like 100 yards away. That's certainly not the body of fish I'm on right now. So I'm gonna try and stay in this area and run across the fish again. Though I'm using the birds to find a good area, I'm not gonna run all over the place and just shoot from one pile of birds to another. A lot of times the fish are there, they're down on the bottom, brought some bait up, the birds got to it, but the fish are still there and you're trying to work the body of fish. You don't spend your whole time just racing after piles of birds. And I'm using my plot on my machine to see where am I going, where have I been, and let's see if we get back on the fish. And I'm going to show you the machine right now. So you can see that there's a lot of little swirling around going on there. I'm trying to stay on the same piece. And I got two machines that I'm working here. One is a a Garmin, the other's a Raymarine. One's got a down view and a side view. And the one on the left, the Raymarine, is just a down view and is I'm using the plotter on that one. Let's get this camera set back up. All right. And we're trolling again. I'm just at three miles an hour. I'm going back over the water I already went over, trying to find this body of fish, which was pretty good. 
I'm looking for any little sign. I can see a cormorant popping up somewhere. Probably gonna work that. I'm just gonna stay in this one little area right here until I see something better come up and then I'll slowly start working towards that. Not necessarily gonna race away from this area. I know there's fish here. There's no need to leave fish to go to find fish. It's gonna be a lot easier to find them here than be going half a mile in that direction, try and get on a body of fish that may or may not be there when I get there. So I have a quiet moment. I'm just going to show you exactly how we rig these. Now, we take the tail. We're always going to take the hook so the tail is down. Some people like to fish it with the tail up for whatever reason. I'm more of a tail down guy. I feel like it gives it a better action. And what I'm doing is I'm laying the jig along the tail, figuring out about where that hook's going to come out. And I'm just going to take it and make sure I go right down the center from the middle. And I can come out at that same spot that I just eyed up. I'm going to take this, got to look at the size of the barb on this head. It's great, great for holding these tails. I'm just going to push that up and over. It's nice and straight. Ready to rock. Another good idea when you're controlling and you do have that quiet moment. Every now and then, grab your rods, give them a couple of shakes, make sure there's nothing on and there's no seaweed or grass or anything like that. So, I'm using two different types of lures here. I've got what's called the whippet fish. That's this one with this clever tail on it. And there's also a whippet eel. It's got this long, straight tail on it. Now, I actually like them both. I'm not. I don't think eels out at the moment, but I might put them out in a little bit. The whole idea of the whip and eel is it's got a totally different action. It's got this long tail. It's great for popping and chicken. Oh, hang on. Uh, there's fish on here. So sometimes, if you're not paying attention like I just wasn't, you'll hook up a fish and not even realize it's there. And because I'm traveling, the boat's traveling so slowly, you know, less than three miles an hour, it, it just still looks like the rod's bad until you pick it up. You know, definitely a fish on this thing. Okay, this guy, not very big. I don't have a lot of size on this fish. Not that bad, though. a little bigger than I thought he was. Still not that 28 inch size I'm looking for, but I'm not too shabby. Get him back. Right here. And let's get back in gear. So there were a couple other boats fishing around me. And like I was saying before, that they're trying to, trying to run down the birds. And I'm nowhere near them right now. They're back behind me here. And what I'm just trying to do once again, I'm just trying to stay on top of the body of fish and I already found. Using my plotter to go back and forth over this area. So there's two different types of lures here. There's the whippet fish, that's the one with the tail, and you can put a skirt on it or not put a skirt on it. Here's the whippet fish with the skirt that gives it a little more body. You just got to keep watching these rods because they've been going off pretty good. And then there's the whippet eel. Now the whippet eel's got this long tail and a very different action than the whippet fish. I love this lure because it actually has a little less water resistance, can run a little bit deeper. Right now, I'm only running the whippet fish. I might switch to some of the eels. Sometimes the eel fish is better. Sometimes the whippet fish fish is better. You never know. And once again, you add the skirt for body or not. And, you know, the nice thing I like about this, and I think that this thing that distinguishes these lures from the other lures is this head. This head is beautiful. So this is just a little three ounce head. You can see it right here. And look how much wide, how much gap we have here to actually hook the fish. And that's a nice, heavy hook. 
Alright, let me see if I can get you back on the fish and hook up a couple more. So, right now I'm making a bit of a turn. I'm only 10 feet of water right here. The deeper edge is behind me. And one of the things I've done is I'm making my turn so I've actually sped the boat up a little bit because I don't want to drag this inside rod on the bottom. I'm actually watching that inside rod to make sure I'm going fast enough to keep it off the bottom. I'm just making a very slow turn. And once I come out of the turn and start straightening up, I'm going to pull the speed back. So I'm going actually like four and a half miles an hour right now. I'm going to pull the speed back under three miles an hour, just under. So right about now, straighten it out. So another clever thing when you buckle. Just like we got one on here. I don't know when that happened. Oh, he's got size too. Oh yeah. I don't know when I hooked that one. Oh yeah, this one's got some size. I like the feel of this fish. This book turned a little bit. So you can see him better. out, drag them around three miles an hour, you know, and hook a fish. Back. So, I'm about to set the other rod back. You might notice that I'm kind of casual about releasing my fish right now, basically just flipping them back in the water. I'm going for minimal handling here. I'm whipping them, getting the hook out, and getting them back. The water's really cold, and these fish are, I'm getting these fish fishing very fast, so I'm fishing pretty heavy spinning tackle for them. You might, it looks like light tackle for most people, but it's 30 pound braid. It's 50 pound leader. I can put a lot of pressure on this fish, Get them into the boat quick, and then get them back in the water fast. Oh yeah, that's a big fish. That's what I'm looking for right there. Right. Oh yes, this is, take the boat out of gear. Oh yeah. That fish hit so hard, it popped the line out from under the bale. going to be decent. I'm just turning the wheel a little bit so that you're not looking at my back the entire time I'm fighting this fish. The problem I got right now is that I think I might have picked up the middle line. At the very least, I'm dragging my lines, but I'm not going to do anything about that at the moment. They're not going to hang up. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. So once again, now gags, we're absolutely crushing them right here. Wait till you see this fish on a light tackle spin. This might take me a second. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that is what I am talking about. I absolutely love this. Get this hook out and get this guy back in the water. There we go. Al gags whippish fish. It's getting silly now. Back. 
in. Do it again. I am totally digging this right now. We got two other boats out here. Dead low tide. I'm actually fishing in East Chester Bay, in the western Long Island Sound. I, I shot a Throgs Neck Bridge. Got a little bit of a northwest breeze. Maybe it's 10 knots top, so I'm kind of sh sheltered here. And uh, there's a pile of fish here. I want to let you know that I am wild out fishing every other boat here. So I'm 37 minutes into this. I probably have, you know, 20 plus fish. And the fish are good. And this is a fabulous, fabulous fight. Like every single fish on the Al Gags Whippet Fish. And I, I will put the Whippet Eels out in a little bit. But right now, this, this Whippet Fish is working great. I noticed my skirted one's not working as well as the others. I'm gonna keep it out though, because I wanna try and catch a really big fish on that one. It's got a little more body, a little more presentation to it. So a lot of people ask is, why are you trawling? Uh, the reason why I'm trawling is really simple. These fish are spread out across a big broad area. I'm trying to figure out what depths are laying in, where I can find the best concentration of fish. I'm using my plotter to constantly work back across spots where I caught fish. And if I stopped and just cast them, if I stopped and just cast in one spot, it's about out of gear, I'd be working a very small piece of water. And on this bite, the fish will move. And yeah, these guys who are out here throwing shads or whatever they're throwing, they're catching a few fish. I assure you, I am much better dialed in than they are into these fish because I'm trolling. My fight is just as much fun, and I am catching many, many more fish than them. It also lets me fish three lines. And the more you do it, the better you get at managing your boat. Like right now, I turned the boat a little bit and so the wind's on the stern, so the lures are not drifting back over the lures that are still out. You get this guy in here. Another solid fish. And I'll tell you what. Got him on this with it fish. It's craziness. It's crazy this lure, how good it is. But the other thing I like is you don't miss many fish on this. They hit it, you catch them. Back in gear. One thing I can see right now while I'm making this turn, got a bunch of fish on the right side of the boat. I can see it on the side scanner. It's probably underneath this rod. We can pop or two and see if we can convince them to bite. Making a turn, mark the fish, turn the boat over the fish, which are on the right side of the boat, popped it a couple of times, and we're in. Now, I might look a little unshaven here. Here looks like I haven't had a haircut in three weeks. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I haven't had a haircut in about three months. Um, it's the lockdown time. So we're all trapped at home. God knows when my barber shop's gonna open again. Tell you what, another solid fish. Ugh, I gotta reel that up a little more. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get a haircut at some point. Let's go get a bigger fish. So after I made my last turn, I was watching the machine and I was looking at my track and I realized that all the fish are laying on a slope where it goes from about 11 to 15 feet. And the reason why that's happening right now is that there's not a lot of bait right in this little section. So the fish are just kind of laying on the slope, waiting for the current to sweep bait to them. So I'm going to go and start working my boat right along that edge, just bring it up to 15, bring it 
back to 11 and back and forth until I can find that body of fish again. I'm off them right now, but I have a good idea that where they're going to be is up here on the ledge in front of me. I'm gonna slowly make a turn here as I come up into about you know, 13 feet of water and just work along the ledge and see if we can find a couple. So while I have a moment as I'm working back into the piece here, my tide's starting to die. So I'm gonna lose this bite pretty soon. But I want to share with you how to use this Algag's Whippet fish as just a normal shad lure, working rock piles, and so forth. So these head, the head weights go down very small, like all the way down to half an ounce. And that's really just a question of what your personal preference is. Like as the season goes on, fish might want smaller and smaller baits, especially when you're casting to them, and you're going to want some of those really small heads. Honestly, I like to, especially when I'm in a boat, on a piece of structure, I'm probably like at the half ounce, three quarter, one ounce head, and I'll go to a smaller tail. So the tails I have out here right now are five and six inch tails because I'm trolling for bigger fish. But you can go definitely go down to the smaller tails, and it's just personal preference at that point. It's what you fish the best with. So have a good selection of them, work different ones, and find out which ones the fish want to eat. Use skirts. Don't take, take the skirts off. It really depends. Use different weights. You, different conditions are going to make different lures more or less effective. So just have a bunch of them and experiment. And the way I like to rig them, like I said, is a little four foot, three foot piece of fluoro. Maybe use a swivel or a no name knot to attach it. And then a little snap without a swivel that I attach the lure so I can easily take the lure on and off. And so it gives the lure a little bit better action. Sure when that happened. Turned around, rod was bent in half, fish was swimming along with the boat. Doesn't feel like a very big fish. Yeah, not a very big fish. Get him in, get the lures back out. So, this is a big lure. It's like six inch tail. Three ounce head, and you'd be surprised. Like any fish, all these fish definitely take these. So this is a big tail, heavy head, not the biggest fish, but these fish, striped bears are pretty aggressive. They have really big mouths. They are not afraid to take shots at these. Get this guy back in. Boat going again. So I just marked a couple of decent looking fish back there. Try and get some more action. And see if we can hit one of them up. And I'm starting to see some little bait pods. Out. There we go. Just like that. So marked them. Speed was right. Boat out of here, and I'll tell you, if you have a good idea where the fish are, get your lures across them, you're going to catch them with a whipping fish. And this is a respect, another respectable fish. And that's a classic, you know, see them jig them a little bit, give it a little bit more action, see if you can get them bite. Like I said, the, these oils will work dead stick, but they'll also work if you pop them a little bit. Let's see how this guy looks. So I need a respect ball. Alright. Once again, I'll gag whipping fish. Just getting it done. Tail straightened out. Ripped it up pretty good. 